Things are getting a little bit nuts here, Sophie, I know. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and today I want to take a break. But the embargo has just lifted on Panasonic's LX102. I had an opportunity to play with one a while back at Panasonic's US offices, and it's definitely a camera worthy of your attention with one rub. But hold that thought, because before we get into it, ah, the tension between art and commerce. I want to let you know if you're new to the channel, or remind you gently, if you're not, that we've just created a Patreon page and invite you to join us there as a patron of the work we do here on YouTube. I'll put a link into the show notes down below, but you can always go to www.patreon.com slash Brownstone for details. The bottom line is that Claudia and I have become consumed by this work. We love it. And your support to help us build it would be very welcome. Oh, by the way, we get asked all the time what gear we use. So if you're ever wondering about that, we put the gear we use in the show notes below our videos too. As we do links to other videos we think you might find relevant. Our affiliate links, thanks for using them. A link to our merchandise shop, which we probably never would have created except many of you asked. So thanks for that too. We're having fun designing the t-shirts. Our social media handles, a PayPal link for coffee money if you're so inclined. And that is really enough. So as I was saying, this is a camera worthy of your attention. You'll want to take a close look if you're in the market for a super compact, relatively reasonably priced, nicely built, Surprisingly well-specced pocket camera, not only with a 21 megapixel multi-aspect ratio micro four thirds sensor, 17 megapixels effective, fast though variable aperture, integrated 24 75 millimeter full frame equivalent zoom lens, 2.7 million dot EVF, responsive though non-articulating 1.2 million dot touch panel, 11 frames per second, burst rate and single shot, autofocus bracketing for aspect, auto exposure, aperture, focus, white balance, lovely. L monochrome D black and white film simulation and the best grain simulation I've ever seen in camera. Post focus, focus stacking, T and bulb shutter settings up to 30 minutes. Yay, long exposure without add ons. Auto marking, sequence composition, which is very cool. Starlight autofocus, which is also cool. 20x manual focus assist, very useful. Live view boost, useful too, especially at dusk. Now common my menu functionality, which is very helpful and insane. I'm not saying this is a good thing. 10 body and GUI customizable buttons. Continuous UHD video recording in 24 frames per second up to 15 minutes and full HD up to 60 frames per second for 40 minutes. And most important to me, the best set of analog controls I've seen on any camera with built in lens, save for the Leica Q for a thousand bucks, 999 bucks available in October. If you'd like, you can think of it as a GX9, which I believe is an outstanding little camera for street photography, especially when mated to the absolutely lovely Leica DG Sumilux 15 1.7, which we have. But without the articulating EVF, without interchangeable lens mount, on the other hand, better photography oriented controls and a similar, though as I said, non-articulating rear touch panel. Or think Sony's RX series, the RX100 Mark IV currently selling for about 800 bucks, the RX Mark V now selling for 900, or if you insist, the RX100 Mark VI with its much longer 200 millimeter full frame equivalent top end for 1200 bucks. The Sony's beat the LX100 II on size, it's about 100 grams lighter. Burst rate, though all are silly high for this kind of camera. and. Autofocus, though when it comes to single shot stills autofocus, which is how I imagine I'd use it, there's less than you might think separating them. Both systems are excellent. And really the four was contrast detect only like the LX100 II. I do prefer the LX100 II's ergos and features generally speaking to the RX100 series. As for image quality, it's kind of interesting. It's a close call because while the LX100 II has a larger sensor, the latest RX100s have more advanced tech in their backside illuminated, but right, smaller, one inch sensors. I have seen great imagery from all of them. And really, 
They're great, especially for casual travel photography or street photography too, but I think I'd break it down this way. If your highest priorities are speed and autofocus reliability, and you're comfortable with a 24 to 75 millimeter full frame equivalent zoom range with fairly deep depth of field, I'd start with the RX105 with its hybrid AF. If you want additional zoom range, well, we're talking the RX106 with the added benefit of a one-step pop-up or push-down EVF versus the two-step unit of the 4 and 5. But if ergonomics and everyday great 9 tenths performance in this class of camera are your priorities, I'd steer people toward the LX102. Unless, of course, you like to use shallow depth of field as a tool to aid composition, I'm not talking just aesthetics, even more focal range, or really want a video B cam, in which case I'd steer people toward the GX9 with its interchangeable lens mount and dual IS. Although at this point you could get a Sony a6300 with kit lens for the same thousand bucks, we have an a6300, we love it, though once you've experienced the IBIS it's tough to go back and I don't really like that kit lens very much. Or you could go body only a6300 for 100 less, or the IBIS enabled a6500 body for only $200 more. No, I'm not going to go down this rabbit hole right now because then we have to talk about the relative importance Panasonic and Sony each place on their crop sensor cameras and lens systems. When, oh, when will an a6700 or a7000 arrive? When will they fill out that? E only mount lens line. How often, at what time of day do you shoot what? How close to the limit for these kinds of cameras? Blah, 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 blah. Though, if I did think about it, it might lead me to the RX106 with its longer reach because I used to always take my 70 to 200 Canon 2.8L with me on family vacations. Except, you know what? I actually almost never bothered with long landscape shots because. I found being in close proximity to other people always made travel richer. Maybe, if I knew, knew, I wouldn't be bringing work on vacation with me. Knew what I already know, I don't need the long end, and had a grand and not a penny more to spend on a travel camera. At this point in the evolution of the market, I just go with the LX100 too or not, because here's the rub. How often would I, or you, we, need or want more than what our iPhones or Android phones already give us? Would you or I be willing to trade off those things for our smartphones other advantages? How much would we actually get in return if we did? Because like the RX104 and 5, the LX102 has a 3x zoom weighted more toward the wide end, which puts all three in perilously close proximity to the dual lens range of my iPhone 10 anyway. Especially with its front and rear computational imaging, which would give me better bokeh than these camera lens combinations can, at least on an Instagram feed. Better, easier, faster social connectivity, crazy easy, crazy good editing apps, Instagram, perfect for that milieu, zero incremental weight since I always carry it with me anyway. The iPhone 10, like other cameras, has great time lapse, great slow mo, great color and autofocus and broad daylight, still pretty interesting in golden hour, pretty good image stabilization, and I could apply the thousand dollars I'd save if I didn't buy the camera toward plane tickets professional gear, Netflix for the next 10 years, food every now and again for a homeless person, donations to causes we care about. I mean, I'd really like to know what you guys think. At Three Blind Men and an Elephant, we've been pretty well sorted for the past 18 months or so as a two-brand shop for our professional work, Sony and Panasonic. And as I think about it, the last couple of vacations we've taken, I haven't bothered taking a real camera. That's not fair. The iPhone 10 actually is a real camera. What? What? I think Sophie is calling me to take her for walkies. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation below. You guys, 
continue to be just incredible, knowledgeable, inspiring, funny. I mean, you're a joy, truly. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Grab one or both of our new Hold That Thought t-shirts you wanted us to put up at our new 3bmepthreadless.com store. Support our work by using our affiliate links down below in the show notes, dropping us coffee money via our PayPal link down below in the show notes, or even better than that, we invite you to become a patron of our work over at Patreon. Link down below. We've created our Patreon page because we are stoked to bring you not only gear reviews, but with our What Were You Thinking and Good World Gone and Bad series, historical, educational, artistic morsels, and longer form conversations, not interviews, with world-class photographers, curators, gallery owners, keepers of the legacy, folks like Elliot Erwitt, Anya Sear, Mark Lubell, Ethelene Staley, and friends like Brian Smith, Paul Giroux, Nino Rakicevich, and more. We'd really like you to join us to deliver this kind of content regularly. Your support on Patreon will really help us ramp it up. In which case, as always, we thank you for it. That's it. For Three Blind Men and an Elephant, I'm Hugh Brownstone. See you next time.